<laughs> LSU dropped that hammer. LSU absolutely dominated Purdue. Poor now, Purdue, Purdue was a little shorthanded. <laughs> LSU was a little shorthanded. People want to talk about, well, a lot of these guys declare for the drafts. Um, for Purdue, their best, their quarterback and their receiver, and all of these guys, their coach left, understandable. Happened to LSU last year, right? We understand the situation. We understand the gravity of, um, you know, players leaving, coaches leaving, of basically a, a school in transition. At the same time, you got to go out there and you got to play a game. LSU had their basically entire defensive line declare for the draft, not play in the bowl game. Um, but they had to go out there and they had a job to do. And they did exactly what they needed to do. They took control of the game from the second drive. I don't want to say the first drive because first drive they didn't do anything. After that, it was they basically scored every, every possession. And, you know, in my eyes, they did exactly what you want a team like LSU to do in that situation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they go into the offseason with 10 wins. Brian Kelly won the SEC West in his first year. 10 wins season after the bowl game. And he has a team that is returning a lot of players going into next year. And it's, it's, it goes into the, it allows LSU and LSU fans to go into the off season with, you know, a completely different mindset than they did last year. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very exciting to see. Yeah. What did y'all think about? I have, we talked a little bit about it last night. Obviously we had a watch party. We watched, you know, watched the game on the stream. Great time. Thanks for everybody that contributed and helped and just kind of participated in all of that. Thank you guys. Katie, thank you for getting us food. Always <laughs> nice. Um, but what really, I think the the real conversation, if there's going to be one had other than LSU winning what sixty three to seven, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. It's <laughs> who's it's you kind of created quarterback. another quarterback controversy because the more you see Nussmeyer, the more people are kind of clamoring for him because, of and that was as for people that don't like Jaden Daniels or don't think he can be the quarterback that can lead you to a national championship. I think you saw everything you needed to see from him yesterday. I agree. Like he was mobile. He was able to throw Within it. In the he, offense. We, exactly. Yeah. And so like for all of this, like th- there will be a quarterback debate that this is what you do for, like if you do this for a living or if you listen to sports shows, this is something that is going to be a topic throughout the year. And it just is well, another neighbors one of entered the, into yeah. that conversation, <laughs> I think. Might as well. Uh, no, but look, I agree with you. I don't think the talent of Nussmeyer was ever, has ever been in question. Right. I think yeah. everybody understands how electric of an arm he has, how good of a quarterback he has, and the potential that he has to be a quarterback. Everybody knows that. Right? He grew up in it. His dad is the quarterback's coach for the Dallas Cowboys. He has been around it. He has shown his glimpses of it. I think everybody understands that. Jaden Daniels has also done the exact same thing. Right Now, whether you like the way his style of game, his style of play that you can debate that all you want. What you can't debate is how effective he was and how much he helped LSU get to where they got this year. Now, there are some things that he needs to improve on. Yes. Just does he need to get through his reads quicker? Absolutely. Does he need to be able to to stretch the field a little bit vertically? Absolutely. But he has shown the ability to do that. It's about, can he do that consistently? If you want to look at the numbers, right? And you want to talk about, well, Nuss, you know, throws the ball, this, he does the better, the offense moves better. Last, last, yesterday's game, Jane Daniels ended the game 12 of 17 for 139 yards and one touchdown. He had 67 yards and one touchdown on the ground, right? Those 67 yards on the ground did not come because he was relieving the pocket early and he was prematurely running. He was 38, 39 yards of those came on one on a, on a zone read where he made the right read, pulled the ball, took it up the middle, 40 yard gain up, uh, 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 down the middle of the field, right? The other plays were keeping plays alive. He ran within the offense. It wasn't like he wasn't going through his reach and he ended up 12 of 17 for 139 yards and a touchdown. Now on the flip side, Nussmeyer ended up 11 of 15 for 173 yards and a touchdown. 63 of those came into a little, little push pass to Malik, which is fine. It's all part of the game. He looked very well. He has one interception. We spoke about this last night. It wasn't the typical, let me force this into coverage. Uh, interception. It wasn't a, oh, he's a reckless gunslinger interception. It was a bad pass. That's all it was. It was the right read. It was the right play. They got what they wanted. Their best receiver on the outside, one-on-one in a fade situation in the end zone. And he just threw a little, little short and it was a little flat. He didn't get the ball up. He didn't allow the guy to go make the play. That happens as part, as part of being a quarterback. That's part of football. It wasn't a bad read. It was the right read. 
It was the right play, just a bad throw. That happens. Um, but I feel like both quarterbacks played really well. I think both quarterbacks showed the ability to throw the ball down the field. Um, they had Both of them had deep balls that were not completed. I think Malik would tell you he probably should have caught the one. Nuss threw to him. And I think Brian Thomas would tell you he wishes he would have been able to see the ball, but he lost it in the sun. You could see him doing the whole I didn't see it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. When Jaden threw the ball down the field, um, but the passing game and the way they ran the offense was very encouraging. It was very sharp. It shows you the preparation that they did leading up into the bowl game. So, um, according to Brian Kelly, there is no quarterback controversy. Jaden Daniels is the number one guy uh, who will give Nuss an opportunity to compete. He expects all three quarterbacks to be in the uh, in the room come, come spring, spring football. After spring, who knows? But they're all going to have an opportunity to compete. But Jaden is the number one quarterback right now. And he should be. He he has done nothing to lose the job. This is he's QB one. He should be QB one until he proves that he is not QB one. At least that's my take on it. Well, yeah, and that's when you get into like if you look at Brian Kelly's track record, like he's not afraid to pull the plug on somebody regardless of what he did previously or how they like quote unquote is the incumbent or returning starter. Like he wants there to be competition, but Jane Daniels has done nothing to lose the job. Like Nussmeier can flash. He looks good, and it's sexy, and it like within the scheme of what LSU has on the outside and where the talent lies, that's why people are kind of enamored with the Nussmeyer like idea. But it seems like within if you give JD five another year in the Dimbrock scheme, is John Emery coming back? I guess I would yeah, imagine he is right. I would imagine there's no reason to leave. And then you got Derek Davis, who looks like a player oh my coach. Goodness. He took a body, <laughs> and is Noah hear- Kane coming back? Oh, he uh, can. I, yeah, he can. He looked good too. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So uh, you, you have all of this talent. Was like, Trey Holly coming was in? Was it McElroy yes. calling the game last night? No, it was no, uh, Orlowski. Orlowski. Whenever uh, Derek Davis ran over the kid, he yeah, was oh. just like, all you hear is, oh my God. God. <laughs> and this man is in the and portal. He, yeah, right. He just like, a kid. he didn't even play running back this year. He's a new running back. I, I, I mean, I know he came in as a safety, but I know they moved him to running back because they like him running back. He but runs he, like a we need some, we need some, does. and we need some, we need some uh, linebackers. Maybe put him an outside backer. Maybe let him. Maybe let him. Maybe 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 he's not a defender. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they. I don't know what their plan is. I don't know if he continues to stay in the portal after playing. You've seen that a couple of times this year, where quarterbacks that are in the portal are still playing in the bowl game. Like you saw it with the uh, with the Chanticleers quarterback, where he gets hurt on like the last play of the game, but he's in the portal. He's They're, out of the portal. He's back out the pool. He got hurt. Nobody's going to take him. Yeah. Um, but when you see Derek Davis and you heard what Brian Kelly said about him, he was like, when'd you, why'd y'all make the decision or when'd you make the decision to move to running back? Like, I wish we'd have done it earlier. So it's obviously yeah, like they him. want to put him on the offensive side of the ball. But that's like LSU has an embarrassment of riches on like the talent side when it comes and, to the offensive weapons. And, all, and you know, obviously offense was, was, the, was the thing that everybody wants to talk about because they scored 63 points. Well, the offense didn't score 63 points. Score fifty six points. Our boy mm. Quad Quad Wilson had the six other though. seven, the pick six, ninety nine yard pick six, which was awesome. I'm sure Frank loved that, you know, because you know guys like that, you know, you they're they the guys on the team want him to do well, and to be able to have, have a moment like that because it wasn't like he had it and it was a straight shot to the end zone. Uh, he had to, he he had had to weave and he had to he had to move through it and and uh, veer through all this traffic to get there and he did it and it was it was a great moment for him. But the defense played really well. Right, yes. yeah. All the guys that have announced that they are coming back to school to be part of the team next year showed out. They did what they needed to do as far as leadership goes. The team was prepared and they made big plays throughout the course of the game. And I think that is going to be the biggest thing that we can hang our hat on going into next season. Is yeah, offense is going to be good. Everybody's coming back. It's going to be exciting. You know, they, we think they can take the next step. But the defense that was kind of put together. You know, bandage together and say, okay, we have some transfers here, some transfers there. Guys who have been hurt, they, a lot of those guys are coming back. And a lot of those guys are going to put LSU in a position to where you do have veteran leadership. Now some of these young guys can kind of seamlessly get put into a uh, situation where they aren't being counted on every single snap. And you have Mason Smith coming back too, which he tweeted yesterday. He is hungry. He's ready to go. He got mm-hmm. hurt the first game of the Man, season. I'd imagine he he's going to be 100%. Come Florida State game next year. Sage Ryan um, looked good yesterday. Who's that? Sage, Sage Ryan. Looked he did great yesterday. He, he talked, did. He was a five star. He was, his shit. That and was he got, uh, he got called on the hot mic. That was probably not the. Uh, <laughs> that time Brian, to do it. <laughs> Brian Kelly addressed all this. He's like the game did feel like it kind of, like we, we kind of let it get out of hand. Like I even celebrated. I ate some cheese that's off the ground. You have everybody in the bed. 
with the Chiefs at <laughs> Jamar man. Jamar Cain was not I a have, fan. No. <laughs> like, but I didn't even know that the Chiefs at man was in the bed with them. Yes. Like, that, <laughs> he was on top of Jay Ward. <laughs> <laughs> that Chiefs at guy like, hey. is, was whatever drugs he's got, I need him. He Shout was, out to uh, Jack for uh, this video. Yeah, which, about, and then you got Jock, he's right here. Look I at love this. when Greg Brooks like went out and hugged the Cheez-It guy. That was the best. Was Are you pulling it up? Look at Look him. Like, Josh <laughs> is on it right like there. under him. Look at Jamar Chase. <laughs> That's so amazing. <laughs> Watch Jay Ward still stuck. <laughs> He's still guy. stuck. The Cheez-It guy. Still... <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, that was kind of. I will, he's he's out, like, oh I'm my down. God. I'm <laughs> I will was, say, I will it was say, a this. party coach. If you are dressed like that in that weather in Orlando, you gotta have fun. Oh, yeah. uh, you better be. Uh, I'll be one. doing the exact same. He thing. had fans under there. I'll be doing right. the exact but same thing. It was good to see LSU kind of, kind of take their pants down a little bit because they haven't. It feels like it was such a struggle going into this game when you've lost two straight, you lose to A&M. You, you kind had of, some drama on the outside. Exactly. Like yeah. all of the things that are swirling around LSU, it's like, no, we should get inside mm -hmm. the building. I think it goes, it's a credit to Brian Kelly and how good he is as a, as a head coach, as a leader, and keeping these guys focused through all the noise, all the rumors that were swirling around before the game started. You have, you know, Kayshawn going to the draft, coming to school and not coming to school, going to the draft. And the rumors that surrounded that after the fact – um, you know, and you have quarterback controversy, you have who's going to start, who's not going to start, who's going to play, who's not going to play and go out there and be able to take care of business. I think that's a credit to Brian Kelly and the staff and keeping the guys ready, um, you know, to play in, in the bowl game and, and making sure that they understand the bowl game does matter mm -hmm. and, and winning if, that game matters. Yeah. And not only that, but like take it for what it's worth, but obviously he made his, like Brian Kelly made a statement about his coaching staff and said, look, who's on the staff is still on the staff. So right. A lot of rumors out there, everything. There's a very speculative, but he, whatever BK preaches is the gospel. No at doubt. This point. It's, easy, it's, easy to, it's easy to take what you hear mm -hmm. and run with it without having facts behind it because that's the easiest way to go about it. You never really know, right? There's always, you know, There's three there, what, was that the game, what was that game that you play when Telephone. you're young? You have the whole yeah. line and you tell, it starts with one person. By the time it gets yeah. to the end, it's not the exact same thing. You never know unless you get it straight from the horse's mouth mm -hmm. and straight from the people who are alleged in this situation. You don't really know. Yeah. And, you know, out of respect of, to the, all the people involved, let's just leave it at that. Because yeah. to, to drag someone's name through the mud without actually having any facts and knowing because it's a funny story or it's something that you want to talk about. I don't think that's the way to go about it. No. And then, like I said, you see Brian Kelly, like it got to the point where he had to address it. And the way yep. that he handled it, that's the only way you could. Mm -hmm. So he addresses it, and then that becomes, after at that point, you know, that, that's kind of open and close the book on it.